Today I'm going to show you how to create the skin section from Plink's website, uh, how to create the custom cursor, the change in text color, and also how to reveal the QR code. So the first thing that we want to create is the custom cursor. Um, and the first thing that we notice when we look at it is that it grows and then it scales down. This is one of the things that we are going to add on it. The second one is that the fact that it follows our cursor. And the third one is that when we go up or when we go down to the other sections, um, it appears and then uh, it disappears. So these are the three things that we need to add to the custom cursor. So let's get to Webflow. Uh, we are going to add a section and we are going to call this one skin and uh, I already have some settings on it. I have a little bit of um, uh, padding at the, uh, the bottom and then I add it for, uh, for now just a little bit of height to see what is going on right here. And then I add it um, a background color, um, the black color. And I'm going to add a div inside of this and I'm going to call it um, wrapper, so cursor wrapper. And this uh, div right here is the one that is going to hold the cursor inside of it. And you have to think of this like the area inside um, of which the custom cursor will move. And we are going to set the display to flex uh, then the direction to vertical and align is justified to center and then the width we are going to set it to 100 viewport width and the height to 100 viewport height and then the position we are going to set it to fixed and all of this to zero and um, the thing is that w you have to think um, again of this uh, custom cursor um, this area, because it is fixed, is going to be visible all the time uh, on the screen and um, the custom cursor will always be here even if you don't see when we, um, even if you don't see the custom cursor when we get to the other sections. And um, let's create another div inside of this for the cursor and we are going to call it um, scan cursor and I already have set the width and height to 22 uh, viewport width and then the color to white and the radius to around 50% to make it round um, and right now if you look if you let's if you look right now the custom cursor stays in the center of the screen uh, wherever we go even if we exit the scan section and we don't want this to happen we want it to see only when we are on the scan section so the way i do this is that uh, on all the other sections that are not the scan section so um, in this example the request and the payment section i'm going to set the position to relative and then the z index to one and on the scan section i'm going to set again the position to relative but this time the z index i'm going to set it to zero so um, it will look like the um, scan section is behind all the other sections and the custom cursor um, we won't see the um, custom cursor when we are on the other uh, sections and uh, the other thing that we want to set on the skin section is the overflow we want it to set it to hidden so we won't see it, um, um, so when we move the custom cursor uh, when we go to the left or to the right uh, the element won't um, maybe exit the, um, the section and create um, vertical scrolls and things like that. Um, this is a very important setting. Alright, so uh, we already have the structure for the custom cursor and we are going to create the interactions for it. And the first thing that we want to create is the one that follows, the custom cursor follows our cursor. And we are going to do in uh, to go in Webflow and then we are going to to select the section called scan and then we are going to go to interactions and under page trigger right here we are going to click on move mouse um, mouse move move in viewport and we are going to create an animation and we are going to call it cursor 
move and we are going to select the scan cursor right here the div called scan cursor and we are going to, to click on move and then we are going to go right here down and we are going to um, to set this to 50 viewport width minus um, 50 viewport width and then we are going to select this one and are, we are going to um, to write again 50 viewport width um, so this is this one is minus 50 per, uh, 50 viewport width and this one is 50 viewport width and then we are going to do the same right here we are going to click on move and this time on the y axis we are going to click um, to write minus minus 50 viewport height and then on the one right here we are going to set it to um, 50 viewport height and uh, what it does is that uh, we tell the cursor how to move so if we go live right here we can see that if we go to zero it it uh, it is on the left and um, it works as it should the cursor is right in the center and uh, everything works as it should and then we are going to create the um, the other animation which is the one where it grows and then it scales down and to do this we go again to the scan section and we are going to create um on the element trigger right here we are going to click on scroll into view and then we are going to start an animation and on this one we are going to um, so create an animation a cursor grow and we are going to select the scan cursor and then right here we are going to go to scale and we are going to set this one to uh, so let's say zero delay then duration we are going to set it to 0 0.25 and then the scale we are going to set it to 0 0.8 and then we are going to create uh, to duplicate this one and we are going to set it to um, so the delay and duration we are going to leave it as they are and then the scale we are going to make it one so um, what, we, what we do right here is that it starts small and then it grows um, to the normal size and uh, we are going to click on save and right here we are going to click this one on loop so it grows and scales down um, without stopping and then the offset we want it to be on zero and if we click on preview you can see already that it follows our cursor and it has that animation that it grows and then it scales down so the last interaction that i want to add to the custom cursor is the one that it appears and then it disappears when we um, enter other sections and to do this we are going to add another div inside the scan section and we are going to put this at the top and uh, we are going to call this one uh, cursor appears and I do this because uh, the interaction should be normally um, added to the scan section so when we enter the scan section the, cu the cursor appears but it doesn't really look that good and I have I want the interaction to start before it enters that scan section and this is why I add another div and I add a margin at the top and at the bottom of minus 25% because I want the scan, um, I want this div to be bigger than the scan section is uh, so the animation starts playing uh, before it enters the scan section and this is why I add this margins right here and then I set up the position to absolute and all of these things to zero so we are going to add the interaction of this div and we are going to set under the element trigger I'm going to click on move uh, mouse move over element and then I'm going to create an animation I'm going to call this one cursor appears 
and I'm going to select again the scan cursor right here and I'm going to click on this one and click on opacity. So um, right now I'm going to set the opacity to 0% because at first I don't want to see it and I'm going to um, drag this one to around 25% so right when we enter that section I want it to be visible and this one I'm going to set it at around 19 so we still see the animation playing a little bit of it when we enter that section and I'm going to duplicate this one and click um, right at around 74% so when we start exiting right here um, the section I'm going to set this to 100 and then duplicate this one and at about 81 percent i'm going to set it to zero so we still see a little bit of that animation so right now we have the custom cursor finished and the other thing that we want to create is the this effect right here with the text that turns into black when we hover with the custom cursor over it and to do this uh, i'm going to really fast add the div with the text inside the Webflow and um, the settings right here aren't really important but the thing that you have to keep in mind for this interaction to work is that the text needs to be behind the custom cursor and the way I do this is that I set the on the um, wrapper with the text I am going to set the position to relative and then the Z index to 2 and then on cursor wrapper right here I'm, I set the position to, uh, we already have the position set to fixed and the Z index, I have it set to three. So um, the Z index needs to be higher on the cursor than on the text so that the text appears like it is behind the cursor. This is very important, otherwise the interaction won't work. And for the interaction, we are going to use some custom code. It is very simple. We are um, going to go to the home settings right here. And I'm under the custom code. We have this um, custom code right here. You can write what I have right here, or you can check the um, uh, the description below for the custom code I'm going to add it right there and um, to explain a little bit the, um, the custom code I have this thing right here um, for the responsiveness so when the device is has a width lower than this right here this size right here um, the interaction won't work because um, it is um, a, it, we only want this to work on uh, devices, on desktop this devices. And the other thing that you really need to keep in mind, besides the fact that the test needs to be behind the custom cursor, it th is this class right here. This is the class uh, we are going to add the, the custom code on the class for the parent div of the cursor, so for the wrapper not uh, you are not going to set this one directly on the cursor because it won't work it only works on the parent div and um, the and the interaction is right here it says uh, mixed blend mode difference so um, because the custom uh, cursor is white we are going to set uh, to see the text to uh, in black and this class right here you are going to find it on webflow so it is this div right here so the cursor and this is the parent element you are going to use this class right here so the interaction is added to the parent element again and not on the cursor because it just doesn't work when you add that um, custom code on directly on the cursor it needs to be on the parent element so now that we have the custom cursor created and this text that tur turns into black uh, when we hover with the custom cursor over it we want to create the qr code and when we hover over it we want it to appear and then to disappear when we aren't uh, having the custom cursor over it and um, the original website had 
this QR code with the white background for it, but um, it was very hard to make this work and the way I did this is that I removed the uh, white background of the QR code and I only left um, this black rectangles right here, this black code right here and um, I made the color the same as the background and you could see um, the QR code but you can see it because um, everything is black and the QR code is the same color and when we go with the custom cursor behind it we are going to see the QR code so the QR code is over the custom cursor and this is how you see it because the custom cursor is white and you see the QR code um, even you could see it right here right now but again it has the same color as the custom um, as the background and this is why you don't see it and I uh, the way I removed the background of it is I added the um, QR code inside of uh, Illustrator and then I use image trace you can find it right here and I set it the mode to black and white and I have this um, vectorized QR code and again I change the color uh, to be the same black that the um, that we have on the website and um, uh, and then I went into Webflow and I'm going to add that section with the QR code um, right now and uh, I'm going to set on the scan I'm going to remove the setting this setting right here so um, the QR code um, uh, the settings aren't really important right here but again you have to keep in mind that uh, directly so we have the div that holds the QR code then we have uh, the wrapper for the QR code with the image and all uh, and those arrows that we see when we hover over it and um, for the QR wrapper I set the Z index to 4 and uh, because we want it to be over the custom cursor and on the cursor we have 3 for the text we have 2 so the QR code um, is above everything else and then on the QR code we have it set to relative and I added another div inside of it and I added um, the position I set it to absolute I added these margins right here and I added the image that uh, image that I created in Illustrator with the QR code I added it as a background image uh, for this div and uh, it is the position is set to centered and uh, the size to cover and then I added another div inside of this that holds all those arrows that we see uh, when we look on the animation right here and um, this on this div I added again the position to absolute I set all these things to zero and then um, so let's see the opacity should be 100% so we can see uh, you can see what I'm talking about and then the uh, arrows um, I added them like this I set the position to absolute and I added them um, each of them I added in it them in the corner that they should be and um, for the interaction um, on the QR code wrapper right here that holds the image and all these arrows uh, I set the cursor to none so when we hover over the QR code we shouldn't see the cursor so that the person can scan that QR code and without the cursor to get in the way and then the other thing that I did on that div that holds the arrows, I set the opacity to 0% um, so we can create the animation because at first when we look on the website we don't see those arrows, they appear when we hover over them. So the way um, the interaction for the arrow arrows work on this QR code is that at first we don't see them but then we see them and if you look closely um they are bigger and then they are small and then they um 
go back to the normal size. So it um, they appear smaller, then they grow and then they go to a smaller size. And the way we are going to create this is that on the wrapper with um, with the QR code, with the image and uh, with the arrows, we are going to go to the interactions. On, under element tri trigger, we are going to click on mouse hover and then we are going to create an animation right here and we are going to call it arrows appear on and then we are going to select the div that holds all the images with the arrows and we are going to click right here and I'm going to click on opacity and at first again we um, we don't really see them so the duration is at zero and then the opacity set to zero and then uh, the scale for them um, we are going to set again the duration at first at, uh, to be at zero so it starts um, looking like this and uh, at first we see we see them bigger um, so we set uh, the scale right here to 1.1 and then um, we are going to duplicate this one and I'm going to drag it right here and we are going to set the duration to 0 0.1 1, and then we are going to set the opacity to 100% and then for the scale we are going to duplicate it drag it right here with this one and we are going to set the duration to 0 0.1 the same like the one before and um, for the size we are going to set it to uh, 0.9 so 0 0.9 so it is smaller right now and then I'm going to duplicate again this scale right here and uh, I'm going to set the duration to 0.2 and the scale I'm going to set it normal scale to 1. So again it starts uh, bigger then it is smaller and then bigger big again but not as big at, as at the start and uh, because so it works as it should um, and because we want the hover to happen every time we need to add another interaction right here and I call this one, I'm going to duplicate this one, I'm going to rename it off and I'm going to delete all these things um, besides the first one and I'm going to set the opacity to zero. Um, I call this a false trigger so every time um, we are going to hover, the arrows will appear and then they will disappear and the animation plays every time we hover um, over the QR code. So everything works as it should. In the preview of course you won't see the, um, the text um, color changing but when you look at the um, on the website you will see everything uh, looking like this. So let's recap again what we did. Uh, we created a custom cursor that follows our cursor. Uh, it grows and it, and it scales down and then we created the interaction for it to appear and disappear when uh, going to other sections. We created this uh, effect right here on the text that um, it changes color to black uh, when we hover with the custom cursor over it and we also created this effect right here with the QR code that appears when we hover with the custom cursor over it and those arrows that um, grow and then uh, they scale down and then grow again. So uh, thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.